Mississauga Creates. I'm your host, Angela Chow, and weekly I will be talking with local creatives, showcasing the amazing talent in my hometown, Mississauga. Today we are talking with the award-winning poet, Susan Kesapolsky. Susan, tell me a little bit about yourself. I was born in Italy. My parents immigrated to Toronto when I was young, and Mississauga has been my home for over 30 years now. Following my retirement from a 32-year career in public sector, I rekindled my love of writing and founded WriteWell to support organizations and individuals in creating wellness through the power of expressive writing. I'm a graduate of the Humber School for Writers, a Jack Canfield certified trainer, and also a HeartMath Building Personal Resilience coach. In 2012, my first poetry book, My Words, 421 pages, was published, and since then I've written four other books and have been featured in numerous anthologies, magazines, and online platforms. I have also developed and started delivering creative writing workshops. Know firsthand the value of incorporating writing into a wellness practice, and I'm inspired to share this with others. My three workshops, Write to Heal, Creative Resilience, and Write Your Story, a memoir writing workshops, were all geared to support my participants' journey to wellness by helping them to express themselves and to find their own voice in a fun, creative, safe environment. I always look forward to opportunities to collaborate with others, to help build the creative outlets for good mental and emotional hygiene. When we express ourselves, it uplifts us. And we need to express instead of depressing ourselves. And this has led me to work with you on the Feel It Project, awarded the Mississauga Arts Council Fusion Grant in 2019. And I have also been volunteering with the Toronto Writers Collective, facilitating expressive writing workshops throughout the GTA for almost six years now. Susan, how long have you been a poet? And when did you get started? One of my favorite photos of myself is me at eight years old, borrowing my dad's typewriter to write poetry. Writing has always been a companion to me in my life's journey. Even at this young age, I was inspired to write about emotions, identity, and world events. My poetry to this day is meant to capture my feelings of wonder, my curiosity, my defiance, my anguish, and to immortalize them. My writing practice is a way of communicating not only how I feel, but also how I see myself, and this helps me to define my place in the world. Some of the poems that I wrote from age to 11 to about 15 were featured in the Mississauga Writers Group anthology, A Child's Wonder. Um, my poem, uh, Child of War, that I wrote at age 12 was also used in South Africa at a workshop that was conducted at the Nelson Mandela School of Public Governance at the uh, University of Cape Town, helping to support workers that deal with children impacted by war. I started writing at a very young age and I've never stopped. It is my constant go-to tool to help me unwind, to express my emotions. And each time I write, I feel a sense of relief and the unraveling of whatever stress has been building up inside of me. What is your inspiration and who are your influences? I'm inspired by art, by music, by meditation, by other artists. Uh, Maya Angelou has been my favorite. Uh, Rumi, Pablo Neruda, uh, David White, a contemporary poet, and also my fellow artists such as yourself and Mrs. Saga. Um, everything really is an inspiration. Life events, I take it all in, and somehow, some way, it finds its way onto the page. Um, stillness, tuning into my life, listening with an open heart, um, inspires me and brings out my best writing. Um, the daily dose of writing um, really motivates me to rise above what's happening around me and that's very much needed. Maya Angelou's uh, book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, um, in 1969, I read that in high school and I fell in love with her voice, I fell in love with her way of writing, and it was a real privilege to actually get to see her when she came to Toronto in 1998, to be in her presence. It's a treasured memory and I tap into that often when I'm 
um, getting into a dry spell and needs some inspiration from my writing. I incorporate her work in my workshops because she's such a powerful inspiration. And she taught me to truly appreciate the power of words and the impact that our words have and be mindful and intentful about the words we use. And I use this when I, when I write my poetry. I was also influenced by Carl Jung and his work in psychology and consciousness and how he combines religion and literature and the definition of self. And at a very young age, I was intrigued by his concepts and his theories around collective unconsciousness. And these are the things that feed me and help to inspire me to keep writing. What do you feel before you create and what do you feel after you create? Before my pen hits the paper, I have a sense of swirling and bubbling over um, too much thought in my head. And that's when I start to write and the unraveling starts. And it moves me into a state of calm, which I always really appreciate being able to do. And each time I begin to write, I start with centering myself and tapping into my creative process. And then the words start to land on the page. Um, I've always been really keen on having access to writing every day and using it as my coping tool for settling my mind to help me to uh, rebalance myself and I love the simplicity of being able to write and to express myself. It's such an easy tool to use. And helping others to create also is extremely important to me. And it takes my own writing to a whole other level when I um, facilitate my Write Well creative writing workshops or facilitate the Toronto Writers Collective expressive writing workshops. 100% of the time, they always inspire me and they fill me with a sense of renewal and motivation to keep me doing what I do. No matter how exhausted I am when I'm heading into a workshop uh, due to the demands of my day or my life, I always, without exception, leave the workshops renewed, uplifted, and that's the power of writing and creating and sharing it with others. How has being in self-isolation affected the way you create? The advantage of being self-isolated is that I have more time and, and the gift of time is what this has given to me. So I have time to focus on my work, time to come up with new ways of sharing my information, uh, moving to an online platform, which um, was challenging in the beginning, but an important aspect of keeping connected with others. My writing practice um, hasn't changed except for the fact that instead of being able to write in the morning and in the evening, which is my usual practice, I now have quiet moments throughout the day when I'm able to also create. And I truly treasure that because often I don't have that time. So I, I'm grateful for that. And also the ability to move to online and to reach others in this um, isolation phase so that people don't feel um, lonely and that people feel that they have a sense of community is really important to me. What has helped you get through these times of self-isolation? I have a centering um, a bookend process that I follow in the morning. I have my journaling, my meditation, and in the evening I do uh, my gratitude list and, and more writing. So I'm more focused on that, um, even more so than um, when I when we weren't um, going through this um, pandemic. I also have um, increased my uh, time in terms of going outside for walks, making sure that I make time at least 15 or 20 minutes a day to get out and to get some exercise and becoming more creative. I've signed up for online um, art courses. Um, I also have wonderful mandalas that are available through Mindless Doodles um, website that I download every day, thanks to you, Angela, and I color them and they really allow me to just have a mindful moment and, and restful um, part of my day. I look forward to that every day. So that's been a, a slight change in my routine. But regardless, I'm always looking to create and to help others in their creative process. And this is why I've also been working on developing the Write Well workshops into an online format and um, supporting the Toronto Writers Collective in their virtual online 
workshop delivery as well. What are you creating during this pandemic? In addition to my weekly posting and updating on my Facebook page, where I share a new poem every week, I have created a new series of poetry. It is called Isolation, Illumination Through the Pursuit of Poetry. And I've created a YouTube channel that combines my uh, photography, my poetry, and um, music. This channel was created to help to provide inspiration through the photographs, through the words, and through the music, and through the rhythm and the rhyme of the verse on the page that I'm sharing. There's a dialogue of self that can be heard, and my narrative of the piece helps to convey the expression of the human condition and helps to shatter that feeling of isolation and, and hopefully connects us. And this is the um, YouTube channel that I have created with the help of Angela Chow, my collaborative partner, uh, to, to put together my poetry, the, the photograph, and Anthony Barr, talented flute musician, and to help to fill that space to give people a moment to pause and a moment to just be engaged in a creative process. And I also help to facilitate the virtual Toronto Writers Collective um, expressive creative writing workshops. And they're aimed at helping to create an online community, a uh, creative community that helps to make us feel less physically distant from one another and connected to a creative process. Their schedule is listed on their website, www.torontowriterscollective.ca, and you can register through Eventbrite to reserve your spot for these workshops. Susan, how can poetry and writing help mental well-being? Well, I think writing is an important component of uh, mental hygiene and emotional hygiene. When we write, it helps to fuel our self-expression. And when we express ourselves through words, we are creating, we're in create mode. And through the process of creating, through our words, we can connect. And through our words, we're able to change how we view our world, how we view ourselves, and that helps us on the path to healing. What tips would you give to people right now? Well, I would encourage people to stay in deep gratitude to all of our frontline workers, to take a moment and a pause out of your day every day to reconnect with yourself and create something amazing. Stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. Where can we find you online? On Instagram, you can find me at writewell underscore 2020, uh, Facebook at my words from my heart, and my website at mywordsnow.com. I'd like to share with you the first in the series of the new YouTube channel, Isolation Illumination Through the Pursuit of Poetry, which is my poem, Pause. And uh, I hope you enjoy it and have a pause in your day. Pause. Awaken to the richness of stillness underlying trials that pass. Stay centered in wholeness. Everything passes. Susan, thank you for joining me on Mississauga Creates. I had a great time chatting with you and I learned a little bit about you. Awesome, Angela. Always a pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you. And we were just chatting with award-winning poet, Susan Kesopolsky. If you enjoyed this video on Mississauga Creates, please tune in weekly where I will be chatting with local creatives, showcasing the amazing talent in my hometown, Mississauga. If you like this video, please subscribe below. See you next time.